output is always relative to the input. In other words, we have talked about in the previous video of ideal working RGB space. Well, that was the ideal one. Well, we haven't talked about that. We only compare them to one another, just so you can kind of get yourself familiar with what they are and how do they relate. Well, which one you should choose will depend on what's your output. So in this video, we'll take a look at outputs and how do they relate to the RGB working spaces. Now you have to take into account that there are two potential outputs the web or the print. Now there's also mobile devices and so on and so forth but it's hard to simulate them using this program so I'll skip that and I'll just focus on other monitors, in other words web, and I will focus on the printing environment. So let's start. Well let's open up our spectrum locus represent, representation of human vision and let's open up sRGB just because that's the most commonly standardly used one and then we're going to compare it to other output spaces. Now let's compare it to well, sRGB, right? That, that's an interesting one because if you're working in sRGB and you know that your output will be sRGB such as web then you have little to worry about because there's not a lot of conversion going on but if you're working for uh, let's say um, let's say you're working for print depending on what print you're working for you might want to change that you might take into account that sRGB is good or may not be the ideal working space well let me show you something let's deactivate spectrum locus so we only have sRGB here and let's compare that with I believe this is an LG monitor and as you can see it's very close in terms of how much color we can reproduce to sRGB this is what you would know as a standard gamut monitor and we can even see this in 3D in fact let's take this and put it into wireframe one color and let's take a look well, as you can see, the, this particular monitor, LG, is better in everything except these magentas and blue. A little bit of reds are... Eh, actually, it, it goes outside of that as well. So as you can see, if this is the monitor that we're working on, sRGB is almost perfectly fitting for that. Right? And that's great, because if you remember, sRGB was designed to be for kind of like a standard environment standard monitors and all that stuff this being a standard monitor fits perfectly so in other words if you're working with this kind of monitor and you're moving your sliders around or you're playing with as long as you use, you're in sRGB you're playing with the color that you can actually see in its entirety alright now let's deactivate that and let's compare this sRGB to another monitor let's say ASIO color edge now let's put it in single color and let's put it in wireframe except as far as the color go uh, we will choose red again because it's easier to see and as you can see we have a pretty good way to cover everything in sRGB except some colors some brighter greens at the top a little bit of blues and magentas here reds and skin tones are quite easily covered as well as blues and greens or this will be some kind of a turquoise not really green and if we see this in 2D you know what I'm talking about right the, the red one that's the color edge monitor well let's compare this to a wide gamut monitor ah, that's a quite a bit of bigger monitor right let's see this in 3D in fact let's put it in wireframe as well and single color let's put it in blue uh, actually let's put it in cyan no not that red didn't update right away so let's put this in uh, what do we say blue okay so this is a, a wide gamut monitor right and as you can see in fact this is what you're seeing right now, that's my monitor 
it's a profile from my monitor and as you can see I cover pretty much everything in terms of greens here uh, reds and everything a little bit of blues I'm, I'm not good with blues here in my monitor and uh, I can pretty much cover everything else on the top slightly very bright green or outside of gamut but for the most part I have a lot of colors I can cover that sRGB cannot when working with my monitor okay let's put this in 2D now and uh, let's compare not with sRGB my monitor but with Adobe RGB let's put this in 3D again and in fact in my specifications it says 98 percent or 97 percent of Adobe RGB which is true right I cover just about the range but not entirely in fact if I reduce the opacity a little bit of the Adobe RGB we'll see something even better uh, yeah you can see here in greens right this area that I'm not really able to reproduce and some other areas like the blues and so on and so forth but for the most part if you were to take a look at it from a 2D perspective you can see that they are relatively closely matched so my monitor would be what you refer to as the wide gamut monitor it will be approximately the size of Adobe RGB usually in specification it says something like 98 97 percent depending on the model and, and the manufacturer some go beyond that maybe 104 or 5 or more of the Adobe RGB for the most part they're when they say standard gamut monitor that's sRGB size when they say wide gamut monitor there it's approximately Adobe RGB size so let's deactivate Adobe and let's deactivate my monitor as well and let's take a look uh, what I wanted to show you is sRGB or better yet better yet we said that we have an sRGB monitor which is approximately the size of this one right and let's compare that when working with Profoto now you immediately can see that Profoto is huge right it's much bigger than the uh, than the monitor able to, how much colors uh, color range is monitor able to reproduce so what ends up happening is if you have an image that's in Profoto has a lot of saturation when you're working with that image you're actually working with this color here in this area but your monitor cannot display what you're doing and as a result you may get some weird effects we'll see later how how we can try to avoid that let's see this in 3d for even better understanding In fact let me reduce the opacity of pro photo so we can see it better and as you can see it's much much bigger than what this monitor is able to reproduce so if you have an image that has a lot of saturation you will work well essentially have blind now let's deactivate that monitor and let's activate my monitor which is bigger right in fact I uh, let me deactivate Profoto once again so we can only see these two compared and uh, let's put my monitor inside of flat true color and as you can see my monitor covers more colors quite a bit except in a little bit of blues and a little bit of magentas here and that's about it and uh, I can even reduce the opacity of this so you can see the the ASO uh, monitor ISO monitor inside my monitor and you can see the difference right one is obviously bigger than the other which would be wide gamut monitor versus the standard gamut monitor so working with Adobe RGB or preparing for prepress or anything like that where you have to print it's a good idea to work with your with your color space that closely matches your output as well as having if you have the luxury to have a monitor that has a larger color space to match that output as well that way you would get all three things 
uh, closely related so when you're working with color you're actually seeing what you're doing otherwise you have to use tricks and so on and so forth well in the next video we'll take a look at not just how we relate to different monitors and how they affect how we work with our images but also the output profiles the print profiles